Hi, I'm Garvin Lynch, and this is Lynch's Pharmacy Health Videos Information Service. This video is on the eye, so it's an eye overview. There is often not a concern about treating any disorder of the eye due to the sensitive nature of the eye and the possibility of damaging it further, which is right to a certain extent. If you are unsure of symptoms, it's important that you go and see your GP. At the same time, just by following normal protocol and using a bit of common sense, it can usually be pretty easy to distinguish between what can be treated both by over-the-counter medicines and what can't. Eye problems can broadly be divided into five categories. We're going to talk about the first three, the painless red eye, which is the inflammation of the eyelids, and disorders of the tear drainage or production. The final two always require a visit to your doctor. They are pain within the eye, so not just a gritty feeling on the surface, but pain coming from within the eyeball and eye disorders as a result of some other disease. So maybe a bulging eye due to an overactive thyroid, blurred vision due to multiple sclerosis, or constant movement of the eye, or constant twitching of the eye can be due to some disorder of the brain. So anything within these two categories requires immediate attention by a GP. We'll just go through some of the more common eye complaints seen in the pharmacy within those first three categories. The painless red eye, or conjunctivitis, is by far the most common eye ailment. Basically, the conjunctiva is a clear membrane that covers the white part of the eye, which is called the sclera. When this becomes inflamed, it becomes red, and we call it conjunctivitis, which is just inflammation of the conjunctiva. It can be allergic, in which case there will be no pus or anything. There will just be some clear watery discharge, or it can be infected due to a virus or bacteria, in which case there would usually be a, a bit of pus. Usually both eyes are affected, but if only one eye is affected, it's less likely that it's conjunctivitis, and more likely to be something like iritis, which is inflammation of the iris, the coloured part of the eye, and the redness would usually be localised to the centre of the eye in that case. If it's allergic, you may have other symptoms like congestion or sneezing. The most common cause of conjunctivitis is hay fever. So you'll often see common hay fever symptoms along with allergic conjunctivitis. So that will help diagnose it and treat it. If it's viral, you will all often have other symptoms of cold. There'll be coughing or a temperature. And again, this will help distinguish one from the other in order to choose the best treatment available. To diagnose conjunctivitis in the first place, it's a very quick test. All you have to do is simply pull down the lower lid and have a look at the colour of the membrane inside the conjunctiva. Not only covers the white part of the eye, but also covers the inner lid. So in conjunctivitis, it will be bright red and inflamed, as opposed to the usual pale pink colour. So that's a quick way to spot conjunctivitis. You can also get something called a subconjunctival haemorrhage, which is where a blood vessel just underneath the membrane bursts, and very often the entire white part of the eye would be covered with blood and would be coloured red. It's completely harmless. There's nothing you can do about it. It's usually more distressing for the patient and they're usually very keen to treat it. But there's nothing you can do. It'll take a bit of time to clear up, but it's harmless and no treatment is required. So, in terms of eyelids and inflammation, styes are the most common type of inflammation of the eyelids. This is an infected hair follicle of the eyelash. So it's just a small lump that appears in the lid margin. So not quite inside the lid or on the outside, but just on the margin itself. It may spread to the rest of the eyelid and usually resolve itself in a couple of days. But there are treatments which you can use, and which I'll talk about later. Redness or irritation in the eyelids with scales or dry skin can be in one or both eyes. This is usually blepharitis. It's commonly associated with seborrheic dermatitis or dandruff. They often go hand in hand with each other. It may be allergic, so you might see conjunctivitis with it, or rarely it might be infective, but it's usually just allergic. Antifungal shampoos that are used to treat dandruff often work well to clear up the scaly skin around the eyelids. So when you're washing your hair, if you just let a few drips down your face, and that can often clear up any dry, scaly skin around the eyes. A small, hard, peel-like lump just on the inside lid 
usually the upper lid, but can be on the bottom lid as well, is likely to be what's called a meibomian cyst, which is harmless itself by, by itself, but, and sometimes might need excision by surgery. It looks like an internal sty. A drooping upper eyelid then is called a ptosis. It's often a sign of systemic disease or something else going on in the body and would require a visit to your doctor. It should be easy enough to tell the discomfort fell between conjunctivitis, which would be an itchy and gritty feeling, as opposed to actual pain from within the eye, which we will always require a doctor's visit. In terms of tear production, dry eyes is a common complaint, which is not enough tear fluid being produced. It can also go the other way, in which a patient might get what's called lacrimation which is tears just running down the face, and it's due to a problem with the drainage of the tear fluid. In babies, this requires a doctor's visit. In adults, often it can be fixed by just massaging the ducts, which are in the inner corners of the eyes. And if it's still not resolved, go to your doctor. Any disturbance in vision needs a visit to your doctor. There should be no vision disturbance for conjunctivitis. It may occur with a migraine, but usually patients will usually recognise that themselves and know what it is. Loss of vision is a medical emergency and double vision especially with ptosis, which is the drooping eyelid and a headache certainly requires a doctor's visit at the very least. These are all signs of a bleed within the brain. And then things like bizarre patterns or halos around lights, especially coming out of a dark room into open light space, definitely requires a doctor's visit because it could be a sign of multiple sclerosis or glaucoma, or perhaps something more serious. Look at the pupil. If the pupil is in any irregular shape, or if change into the irregular shape and it constricts or dilates, again, this needs referral. It could be a sign of something more serious going on in the brain. And if there is any hazy appearance to this pupil, again, this could be some inflammation or something going on within the eye. I would also need a visit to a GP. So for eye treatment, first of all, none of the products for eye treatment should be used for more than seven days. If it hasn't worked after seven days, you need to go and see your doctor. You can use antibacterial drops such as broline are pretty much the only ones and are very effective at clearing bacterial conjunctivitis up. Styes or blepharitis. It's best to use this product pretty generously, even every hour, especially for the first day and decreased after that. It's very effective for those conditions. If scales are adhering to the skin around the eye for a patient, what can work quite well for them is to rub some diluted baby shampoo onto the eyelids and this should remove the scales or any pus clinging onto the skin there. There are what's called vasoconstrictor substances like murine, irritation and redness relief drops. It contains nafazoline, which constricts the blood vessels within the eye and stops the injection of blood into the conjunctivita. So it reduces the redness or irritation associated with conjunctivitis. These products shouldn't be used in patients with already existing eye problems like glaucoma. Sodium chromoglycate is what's called a mass cell stabilizer. It's an anti-allergy drug. It's a fantastic product for allergic conjunctivitis. So clear water discharge and itchiness, those hay fever type symptoms. Another similar product called Otravine Antihistamine eye drops contains an antihistamine and would also be used for allergic conjunctivitis. Substances such as the one found in Optrex are called astringents and work very well for irritation and red eyes. Which hazel is the ingredient in Optrex products? It's best used when there is a vague general complaint of tired eyes with no conjunctivitis. So where something is mild is required. The Optrix works very well in these cases. The normal Optrix has just witch hazel. The Optrix clear eyes has witch hazel and nafazoline, which is the vasoconstrictor substance in urine. So again, it shouldn't be used in people with glaucoma. For dry eyes, you can use the tears natural or gel tears, which are polymers to lubricate the eye. If you have any questions, you can ask me through the Life Pharmacist on the website. You can email me or call into the pharmacy in Broaddale, up Maryborough Hill in Douglas. Thank you for watching.